So welcome back to another exciting episode of Tech Buddies brought to you by the MPC Foundation. Um, so today we're going to be covering off on three different apps. Um, we're going to be covering off on uh, Flip, um, Park Plus, and the Calgary Transit app. So before we get started, has anybody used any of these three apps before? Uh, some kind. I just deleted the memory out, so I didn't <laughs> take it off. So I think you need to get a phone with more memory. Yeah, um, it, I think you're getting pretty close to the top because uh, um, I know I you're very so. concerned about that. <laughs> a question yeah. already. Yeah. <laughs> I used this one. <laughs> And actually, last week they talking about something iOS because I upgrade iOS fourteen, and then uh, I don't know too much, and they changed so much. So they told me to go into YouTube and learn something, right? So I tried to go in YouTube, and they said save your battery life or whatever, and then click this off, click that off, and I don't know what did I click it off when I go to the store and use the uh, use, use this app and it said that no data <laughs> now or whatever. Oh. So I, I think I did something wrong. Sometimes so when, it's hard to learn from YouTube. You can't ask questions. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Um, we might have to, depending on how many things you clicked, we might have to figure out um, what was changed in the volunteer or with the volunteers just so they can go in a little bit more in depth with uh, yeah, um, the settings see. on your okay. phone. Um, okay. So try to follow along as closely as you can, but if there's things that don't work, uh, um, we'll try to get that fixed up. Yeah, it worked before. It's just yeah. that I click something and it's not working anymore. So. Got, got, got to love technology, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know. So we're going to start out by uh, um, talking about Flip. So what Flip is, is an app that is designed to help you um, find uh, flyers. So you know how normally flyers would come in the mail? Usually uh, um, you'd consider them junk mail because you get flyers from all sorts of different people and um, you, uh, you, you get flyers from companies that you don't really need. Um, well, in the case of Flip, it will give you uh, um, flyers that are actually relevant to you. Um, you can actually subscribe to different companies that uh, um, issue flyers so that you can more easily. So what I'm going to get you to do first off is we're going to get the Flip app. So to do that on the Apple Store, you're going to go to the App Store and uh, type in Flip. On the Android phones, uh, um, you're going to go to the Google Play Store and you're also going to Flip. Um, the icon that you're looking for is going to be uh, um, what's shown on the screen here. So look for this icon here, the one that says flip. So I'll give everybody a moment to download the app. Um, so when everybody's ready, um, then we'll proceed. And if anybody runs into any issues, just let me know. And again, uh, on App Store, you're clicking the get button. On Google Play Store, you're clicking the install button. Oh, you have to sign in. Uh, do what do we? Yeah. So once once everybody has it, does anybody not have the app yet? I think it sounds like everybody is good. All right. So. App Store. When you first sign in, uh, um, it's going to. I believe it's going to ask you to create an account. And unfortunately, I don't have uh, images for the account creation part there, um, but. You can either connect it using your um, email, or you can connect to your Google account, or you can connect to your uh, account to create an account. Um, I'm actually just going to see if uh, I can show you on my own. Let's log out, and then I can show you what it should look like when you first sign in. So let me just share my screen here. Just because I think this will be helpful to you. So, this is what it should look like when you first sign into the app here. So you have um, a few different icons that should pop up. And I, I'm not sure if Android shows up slightly differently than, than an iPhone. This is an iPhone. Um, so what you're going to see is setting up an account. So if you've already used this app and you have an account, you can just click on sign in at the bottom here. 
But if you don't have an account, you can sign in with uh, either Facebook, Google, or Apple. Or if you're not comfortable using one of those services, you can actually just click the uh, bottom right icon, the little uh, mail icon. Um, and that one is where you can set up an account using an email address. So if I click on that one there, so I just clicked on the little email icon, um, that will ask you to put in your first name, your email, um, a password that you'd like, um, and then you have to confirm that password. Once you entered those, in, those in pieces of information, click sign up, you'll receive an email with a code to uh, um, log into the account. So I, I'll get I don't understand what the, the next step, I, I have that. Which page are you on right now? Sorry, I'm, uh, oh, you're just searching for that. Uh, go to the Google Play Store. Go, go Play Store? Yeah. Go, go. Hey, so it'll stop. be one of your one of the other apps that you have. Go go pay store. Oh. Go go. Do you, do you have the Google Play Store? So like where you would download apps. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Um, you, you don't have to search on 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 the internet uh, you're going to be um like if you click on uh, on your home screen um there might be a little icon for the google play store um I've, again i have an uh, uh, an apple so i can't show you a picture of it but um let me go back to to the other one here and i'll show you what it should look like so this is the icon for the Google Play Store. It's not? Oh. Um, uh, so you, no. you want to get out of the Google app, that? Close, okay. Yeah. And then you're going to go to the Google Play Store. So you're going to search for this icon. It's probably one of the icons on your home screen. Cool, cool. Now I'll go to, right? Uh, no, um, so it looks like a little uh, arrow. It looks like a multicolored arrow. Arrow? So, so see on the screen? No, I have, I have that. Um, that's, no. yeah, that, this one there. See, see what's circled on the screen? Which kind of circle? Yeah, uh, so see on the screen? Do, do you see, do you see this icon on your screen? Somewhere? This icon? Uh, so, so look at the presentation screen. And app? Um, Microsoft app? Microsoft no, no, app? Not, not the Microsoft app. Um, hang on, I'm going to... Um, so see this uh, icon on the screen right here? No. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, oh so, the something, yeah. Um, I think, is that the right one? I, 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 I think it's the right one. Um, you found it? I found it. Yeah, this okay. one. Uh, this one? That one? I, that I can't one. really see. You need to hold it up a little bit higher. Um, it should be It should be called Google Play. Google Pay? It's pay uh, shopping, right? Uh, not shopping. Uh, um, it, it's, it's where you download the apps. So uh, Google Play. Yeah, I, have, I, I, I saw this picture. I saw. Oh, perfect. Okay, so yeah, if you click on that, that Google Play app, and then that's where you would flip up. Is that I didn't. Okay, then the next step, uh, what? Okay, so then once you go into the Google Play Store, you're going to search for flip. So oh, flip. Okay, 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 okay. Yeah. And the icon should look like this. Yeah, okay, fine. So. Okay, so then click on install. Yeah. It's Excellent. right? Yeah. Thank <laughs> you. <laughs> no problem. So now, once, uh, so again, uh, um, what we're going to do is we're going to create an account. So has, I know uh, with this one, it's a little bit different because of the, um, I don't have a picture for this. So I'm just going to share my screen again um, so we can create an account.
So again, what I want you to click on to create an account is going to be this little icon in the bottom right hand corner. So this will let you create an account using your name and your email address. And if you've already created an account, then you can just click sign in. So I'm going to click on this little icon here. Once I do, it'll bring up this one here. So then you need to enter your first name, your email address, and a password that you want to use for this app. Once you've finished entering that in, you'll click sign up. And then you'll get an email that will have a code. And on the next screen, you'll have to enter that code in. Probably like six digits or something, six numbers. I did not get the is this notification call. Oh, I, I, did not get a, I did not get an email. I did not get the email. Um, you, oh, did you use, uh, um, on the, the screen behind, did you use uh, like Facebook, Google, or Apple, one of these ones? I use email. And you still did, oh, you didn't get a code? Okay, that's fine. Uh, um, if you didn't get a code and it still let you log in, that's, that's no problem. Brian, is this one? Like it? Yeah, good. Um, so don't go on to the next screen yet. Uh, um, stay there. Um, and can you hold your phone up just a little bit closer to the screen? Uh, Patina? Yes. Can you hold it up just a little bit closer? Sorry, it's just uh, um, that far away. It looks kind of white. Um, I don't I don't know what oh. you're actually on. Uh. <laughs> okay. Brian, is this one? Lily, that looks good. That's perfect. So just stay on that screen for now. Okay, thank you. Wash the pink fun, is that right? Mm -hmm. No, uh, it would be, uh, it, the, the app that you're searching for is Flip. F-L-I-P-P. Okay. Lara? Yeah? You haven't done Patina, if you weren't able to to find oh. it. Uh, we can help get it set up for you when we meet with uh, um, the volunteers at the end. Yeah, yeah, so yeah, don't yeah, worry, yeah. don't worry no, too much the about it. Right I the verification code has gone onto the gen mail. So if you don't get a verification code, check your gen mail. <laughs> <laughs> so moving on, uh, um, just in the, F or in the essence of time here. So the first page that Flip is going to do after you've logged in is it's going to say find stores near me or you can enter your postal code. If you click find stores near me, it's going to ask you to find your location or to share your location. So this is good because it lets you um, find things that are close to you. So when you get to this page here, click find stores near me. And then if a little pop up comes up that says uh, share location, say OK to share location. On the next screen here. This is what I got. I do not find stores near me. Oh, uh, Elaine, just move your phone to the, the left slightly, um, just so it's in front of the camera. So do you, do you see this screen in front of you, Elaine? Like on the screen, do you, is this what it looks like for you? Yes. Uh, yes. Okay. It looks like this for me. Okay, so it, it, it probably looks like what's on the screen in front of you right now. So uh, um, see on the screen, in the top right hand corner, there's a little button that says um, skip. Just click on that. Okay. I don't so have, I, it looks different for me. Um, move your phone just a little bit to the left so it's in front of the camera. Um, and then if you could move it just a little bit closer so I can see what's, uh, um, what you're showing. Oh, just in front of the camera. So do you see where the camera is? That's where you've got to put the phone. Otherwise, I can't see it. Can you see it now? Uh, I, think your I think your camera is a little to your left. To my left. So I have to move to the left. Uh, oh, to the right. right. Nope, other way. <laughs> the other way. Yep, uh, almost there. And then uh, um, keep going a little farther to the left. A little bit more. And up a little bit. And then forward. And a little more to the left. <laughs> and forward just a little more. <laughs> Perfect. Okay, you're right on it there. Okay. Uh, okay. So you've actually gone into a, a few, or you've actually gone into it a little bit farther. Um, so hang on that screen just for a little bit. I'll, I'll, we'll catch up with you. <laughs> okay.
you're, you're, you. too, you're too advanced. You're too far ahead. Oh, okay. <laughs> so again, uh, when you're ready, click the skip button at the top here. So once you click the skip button, this is kind of the main screen that should show up here. So it should show you it should show you uh, um, some of the stores around you. So in this case on uh, the picture there, it shows Real Canadian Superstore and Giant Tiger being close by. Um, and these are companies that you can actually go in and find um, essentially different uh, flyers for. So if you scroll down, you can actually um, search for, for flyers uh, um, from other companies. If it happens to be one that you really like, so say you really like shopping at uh, Real Canadian Superstore, you can click the little heart icon at the top here. And then once you click the little heart icon, um, at the top here, there is uh, um, a box where you can actually find all your favorited, um, oh. favorited stores. So if you click the little heart icon here, that becomes a favorite store. And then to find it in the future, you can click on the little heart at the top and all your favorite stores will pop up there. So all the ones that you click the heart icon. Um, oh, it take up uh, the memory. A little bit, Sue. <laughs> <laughs> a little bit, okay. <laughs> okay. So let's say, um, let's say we click on uh, the Superstore ad. So from the page before, I'm going to click on the Superstore ad. Um, what's going to show up next? And it might be a little bit different on yours because this, these pictures are older. Um, so it's going to show you flyers from today, whereas the pictures are probably from a little while ago. So you can actually see uh, this advertisement from Real Canadian Superstore. So you can scroll in here and you can actually see pictures of the, uh, um, the things that they would normally have flyers. If there's something that you find interesting, so let's say you wanted to get dog food, you can actually click on that item. So when you click on that item, it will actually save it to uh, your clipped icons. So, mm. so in this case, uh, um, we clicked on uh, an ad for Purina One. So we- Excuse me. Yeah. Ryan, I, I cannot see the screen. I just can see either you or me on the screen. Oh, um, can everybody else uh, see the screen? Yeah, mm -hmm. I still, yeah. Um, I'm thinking that you might've clicked something on, on uh, Zoom to, to have that turned off. Um, yeah. I what I'm gonna do, I'm just going to stop sharing and then I'm going to start sharing again and hopefully that will um, fix it for you. Okay, thank you. No problem. Just give me one second. Now I have a question. When I, you uh, sign up, you have that code and after you set up the account, you don't need that code anymore, right? That's right. You only need it one oh. time, just when you first sign in. Oh, okay. So are you able to see the screen now? Yes, thank you. Perfect. No problem. Okay, so um, again, once we click, so where uh, I was before, so if you find a, a clipping that you think is interesting, once you click on that, um, it will actually save it to your, your clippings. So on the next screen here, so at the bottom here on the main screen, there is going to be a button called list. And that button is where you can actually go in and find any like clippings that you have thought are interesting. So imagine you have a physical flyer and you have a pair of scissors and you're cutting out those uh, those flyers. This is kind of like the digital version of doing that. So mm. you're going into the different flyers, you're clipping out the different uh, um, advertisements that you think are interesting. Um, and in this case, you're saving them to this folder called list. So once you go into it there, you can see all of the things that are, are there. So I think, da, da, da. so um, the other thing that you can do inside of this list icon here is in addition to finding some of the, the interesting um, clippings that you had, you can actually create shopping lists on here. So if you click on that list there up at the top, and I'm actually just gonna do this on my own because uh, um, I think it might be easier if I show you this way, but let me just quickly go in and then I'll share my screen. So I'm just going to share my, my iPhone and I'll show you what that looks like. So here is uh, what it looks like on mine. So when I want to go to the list there, so if I click on list in the bottom, 
it pops up like this. So right now, um, if I had some things that I had gone in and clipped, um, they would actually show up in the clipping section near the bottom. So they would show up in here. At the top though is something also useful. It's uh, your shopping list. So you can actually go in and add different things to your shopping list. So some things that are done easily, so recommended items, you can actually click on that button there. And then uh, a little list will pop up with things that people oftentimes will buy from, from the store. So let's say I need to go grocery shopping and I wanna to remember to buy eggs. So I can select eggs, um, I can select milk, I can select bread, um, and maybe I wanna buy some, uh, um, some, I don't know, potatoes. Um, so I can add those all there and click add items. And they will actually show up um, on my shopping list. So it makes it easier for you to remember the things that you need when you go to the grocery store. The other oh, nice that's thing, good. Yeah, good. Um, the other nice thing on this as well is say you wanted to buy milk, but you wanna get a good deal on milk. This app will actually help you find deals on um, the things that you have in your shopping list. So if I click on milk, for instance, it will actually come up with advertisements related to milk. So they, they may not necessarily be at the store you want, so you might need to uh, um, sort by store at the top here. So you can actually search by store. Um, but on the, the right side of each of these there, you can see like the little icons for um, the stores there. So this one is Walmart, this one would be like Loblaws, uh, Rexall. Um, there's a few other ones is there, Save on Foods, uh, another one for Walmart. Um, so it's a really easy way for you to find uh, and organize your grocery list. Mm. When you are done, you can, when you've gone grocery shopping and you found it, so let's say we have milk, we can actually check it off and then it'll cross it out so we know we don't need to buy it anymore. If you want to get rid of it on your shopping list, if you select in the middle here and drag to the left, you can actually delete it. So I'm gonna do that again with the eggs. So I'm gonna select in the middle here and then I'm just gonna to slide to the left and you see how uh, it appears a delete sign. And then if I keep going, it gets rid of it. Mm. And I can do that for everything on my list if I wanted to. Mm. And then I'm back to an empty list. Do you need uh, Wi-Fi or internet? Yes, you do phone? because um, it, what, what it will do is it will find advertisements related to, um, related to the items on your list. So if you uh -oh. aren't connected to the internet, it won't show. Okay. I have, um, Ryan, I, 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 I do have some problems. I need help. I have um, on my clippings, Home Depot, and then there is something expired. I want to get rid of it, but you said move it to the left. It doesn't let me move anywhere. Oh, okay. So on the clippings part, so you mean down at the bottom here, right? Oh, okay. All right. I have another question where I can add a I want to shopping list and then I want to add egg in there. How do I do that? Sure. So uh, um, actually, I'm going to go back to sharing my, my iPhone screen because I think it, it actually is easier for, for this one. And I realize uh, how much one. So I, I might have to go forward a little bit faster than I, I have been just based on okay. uh, how much uh, I'm doing there. But um, I'll just show you one more with this one here. So again, mm. back on the, the app there. So let's just say um, I wanted to um, to add in uh, something from Walmart. So let's say I want mushrooms. So I've added in this one there. So this is what my clipping shows like right now. You have one from Home Depot, right? Um, so if no, I, I'm, to... I actually wanted to, to add eggs in my shopping list, but oh, I could okay. not find a place to, to add eggs in. So how do I do it? So if you, let's just say we have uh, um, like, I don't know, milk and cheese already I, on. Oh, recommended you, items. Oh, okay, 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 okay. So you can go, you can go there and you yeah. can add things as well. You can also. So, can so also on the recommended a, items to make a list recommend. So I just click on X and then say select or add. Um, add. Oh, okay. All right. Thank you. And then if you want to add something that's not on the recommended list, see at the bottom here where it says um, there's a little icon or there's a little like add button down at the bottom here. Mm. Oh, I'll bring up the spotlight again. So right here, add mm -hmm. icon. So yeah. you can do that and you can search for things that aren't necessarily um, recommended ones there. So let's just say I wanted to search for uh, craft dinner, like a type of noodle. So mm. I can add specialty items like craft dinner. So you can customize your list as well. Okay. 
Perfect. So just in the essence of time here, I am going to move a little bit faster um, through the next part. So, and again, with this one here, you can also clip um, advertisements as well. And those will all show up under that same list spot as well. Um, another thing that you can find on here is on the main screen, there's deals. Um, so mm. these are things that the app thinks are going to be relevant to you. Um, they're the, the hot deals that, um, that they want you to be aware of. So again, list is on the bottom right. Deals are kind of like in the, um, the left a little bit more. And you can actually search for deals based on different, different industries and mm. different price ranges. So again, just in the essence of time, um, if you have any questions uh, um, related to that, we'll answer them all with the volunteers at the end here. So I'm gonna move on to the next app. So next app that we're gonna focus on today is going to be the Calgary Transit app. Um, so this one is a really useful app if you happen to take Calgary Transit. So whether it's the bus or the C train, um, this one is a really good one to have on your phone. So just like with the, uh, um, the Flip app, if you want to download the Calgary Transit app, you're going to go to the App Store on um, Apple, and you're going to go to the Google Play Store on Android, and you're going to search for Calgary Transit. So the icon that you're going to search for is going to be uh, um, this one that has the red Calgary Transit on it. So if you want to get that app right now. And then if that looks good, once everybody has the app, does anybody not have it yet? It asks me why I see transit to SS this device location. Say allowed. Uh, wh which which app do you have? Uh, Tailory Transit. Allow why I see transit to SS this device location. I uh, say yes to that. Yes, this one. Where, where's Google? Uh, App Store? We, now App Store, right? That's right. Um, so you got to go to the Google Play Store or App Store. Oh, okay, that's Google, correct. Lily, that's Google? the right app. App Store. Which one? App Store. Um, see, the, see the icon um, here? Again, Google Play Store. Um, again, oh. with, yeah. Go back, Athena, go back if there. you're not able to find it again, we'll, we'll do a one on one session at the end with the volunteers and they'll be able to help you go through find find it specifically. I found, I found, I found. Oh, okay. Okay. Excuse me. Yeah. I am getting the same problem again. Can you redo it again? Oh, just stop uh, your share screen, Ryan, and then oh, yeah, share yeah, yeah. Sure. I'll stop and I'll just restart the share one I'm second. So Sorry, I know don't worry about that. That's okay. Yeah, I know what I did. See, this is all about learning. Yeah. Is that better? Yes, yes. <laughs> sorry, sorry. No, 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 yeah. no problem at all. <laughs> I'm getting this. <laughs> on that's my good. That, that's the goal, right? <laughs> okay, so once you've installed the Calgary Trans ends it up for the first time. Um, it, you may get a question that asks if uh, it's okay for the Calgary Transit app to find your location. Say yes to this. The reason why uh, it's, uh, you want it to be able to know your location is when you open up the app, it will help you um, find the closest bus routes uh, uh, based on where you are in the city. And if okay. you, uh, you do not have data when you are in the, on the street, then it won't work, right? This is another one where I believe you do have to have data for. Because mm. it'll pull up um, recent schedules and things like that. Um, it'll also give you warnings and messages if a bus is running late too. So this in front of me, this is the what it looks like on the Android phone. It's going to look slightly different on an iPhone compared to this. Um, but what it's going to show you on the iPhone is a little dot in the middle of a map that shows where you are. Um, below that, it's going to show you some of the routes that are close by to you. Um, so some of the buses that are, are close to you. If you want to get direction to a location, you can actually click on the bar at the top of the routes um, and it will ask you to type in the address that you want to travel to. So when you do that, 
it will give you bus routes that get you to that location. So again, showing on the map, the location is predetermined by GPS, um, but you can move your screen around if you want as well. Um, below that there is the address of the chosen spot. So again, iPhone is gonna look a little bit different than Android, um, but this is going to be the spot where you can enter in an address for a place you want to go, not where you are right now. And then below that is the available routes. So uh, again, if there's um, uh, train number 19, uh, Max Orange, train number five, an LRT station close by. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna plan out a route. So you're gonna click on the bar at the top of the, the routes there, and we're gonna type in an address to, to go to. So what'll pop is where you are right now and where you want to actually go. So at the top, that's where you can type in the address for where you wanna go. So in this, we're gonna try going to the Calgary Tower. So we're going from 240 Regal Park Northeast to the Calgary Tower. So it's gonna show us all the different routes of how to actually get there. So notice at the top, it's got a little, and I'll, I'll just put up uh, my, uh, my spotlight so it's a little bit easier to see. So you see at the top here, it's got times. So this is kind of, are gonna be on like a sliding scale. So you can see how close you are to the times. So let's say it was 11.30 right now, or 11, yeah, 11.30 right now. We'd probably have to wait till about 12 o'clock before we started. And then taking this route, we could walk for a little while to the C train station, then take the C train and then walk a little bit more. Um, a second option would be uh, um, to walk to, to a bus stop and take the number 19, then wait a little bit of time and then take the number 301. Um, and then uh, there's a few other routes. So if we click on any one of these options, um, we can actually get more details on like where we need to go. So up at the top here is going to be a little settings button. So if you click on that, it's going to show a few things that'll be useful. So show on map is going to allow the program to show where you are on the map. This is good to have on there. Underneath that is set home and set work. So if you always take Calgary Transit to go home or to go to work, you can actually set the addresses for home and work so you don't have to type them in each time. You can also add custom locations just below that as well. So if there's a place you go to all the time um, and you don't wanna have to type in the address for that place each time, you can actually add that custom location there. Below that is my transit modes. So here's where you can select the different types of things that you want the Calgary Transit app to show you. So if you want it to show you the C train, uh, make sure that's checked. If you uh, um, want it to show like max lines or bus rapid transit lines, uh, again, make sure that's checked off. Same with bus lines as well. Um, if you don't want those for some reason, um, you can uncheck those so they won't show up on, uh, on the options. And then, uh, um, Below that are the transit options. So you can see the maps, the, the, the line colors. Um, you can ask it to minimize walking. Um, so it'll show you routes that don't require you to walk very far. It'd be good if you don't like to do a lot of walking there. Um, and also accessibility info if, uh, if you need it. Um, another one, uh, um, if we go down a little bit farther. So again, I, um, the next screen here is just scrolling down a little bit farther. Um, so your other modes, so you can actually yeah, say um, whether or not you bike or whether or not you walk as well. So if you never go on a bike, um, you can actually uncheck this and then it'll stop giving you uh, directions based on, on taking a bike first. So does anybody have any questions with the Calgary Transit app? No. Awesome. Okay, we're back on schedule. So now the final one that, that we're going to be covering off today is going to be the Park Plus app. So I'm, I'm not super familiar with the Flip app or the Calgary uh, Transit app, but I am very, very familiar with the Park Plus oh, app because okay. I spend way too much money with Calgary's parking uh, authority. Um, they, they take my money all the time whenever I'm <laughs> This one I'm very good with. Uh, um, <laughs> so, Again, like the other ones, we're going to download the My Parking app. So again, go to the App Store on the Apple uh, um, iPhones or the Google Play Store on an Android phone. And you're just going to type in My Parking. And what you're going to search for is the little P there. Another one you can search for is um, Park Plus. 
Um, Calgary's is also called Park Plus. So you're searching for this little P. So get a, give everybody a few seconds to get that. Has everybody done the Park Plus app, the My Parking app? Okay, so I'm going to move on to the next screen here. So when you first log into the Park Plus app, it's going to look a little bit like this. So there's a couple of things that we can do. Um, Park Plus is really useful because what this is for is if you're parking on um, the, the streets in Calgary, the, the parking spots you have to pay for. Um, so most of the spots you'll see a little code that's above um, the sign that says how, when you can, when you can't. Normally you'd have to go to the machines and, and, and put in your credit card and, uh, um, and type in the, the number for the, the area there. You can actually do that on your phone instead. Um, so if it's raining outside and you don't want to have to go to the, um, the machine to actually pay for your parking, um, you can do this all on your phone. So there's two things that you can do on here. If you go parking outside a lot, uh, you can actually create an account for yourself so that you, um, so that you can actually uh, uh, have all your information saved. But if you don't want to create an account, there's a section on here called Quick Park. Um, so I'll really quickly go through Quick Park and then I'll talk about uh, whether, or actually having an account. So Quick Park is where you can go in and essentially um, put in the zone number. So that little number above the, uh, above the street signs that say when you can park, your license plate, um, the province uh, of the license plate, um, cost end time, so how long you're gonna be there for, um, and if you need to, an email address so you get a receipt. On the next screen after that, um, you can actually go through and uh, um, proceed to payment, so like add in a credit card for, for, for this particular transaction. So again, Quick Park, this option here for Quick Park, is only if uh, you don't use the app very often and uh, um, you just want to do like one time um, and then you probably won't do it again. If you plan on using this app more than once, then, then that's where you actually want to create an account. So what you'd wanna do with that is down at the bottom, um, there's a button that says create an account. So click on that to actually uh, go in and start adding your details in. So create an account lets you make it so that you can save your car's information and you don't have to enter it in each and every time. So what it's gonna ask you to put in when you go to create an account is the user ID you wanna use, um, a password you wanna put in, first thing your last name. If you have a company, you can put that in too, uh, but you don't need to. And then finally the email address. Once you do that, you have to agree to Calgary's um, or to Park Plus's terms and conditions, and then you can save that. So once you've entered or once you've created an account, you still have a little bit more that you need to do in order to be able to use the app. So what you need to do is you actually need to add in your vehicle. Um, the way that it, it works is it has your vehicle saved so that you don't have to enter in the details for your vehicle each time. In order to enter in your vehicle, you would actually click on the little um, lines in the top right hand corner here. From there, it'll actually let you add in account information. So account information is where you can go in to add things like uh, your phone number um, and your license plate. So your phone number, that makes that's pretty straightforward. You, you just enter your cell phone number. Um, license plate is the one that I'm gonna focus on here. So when you click on the license plate, what's gonna pop up? Oh, actually, so this is for adding the phone number here. Uh, so you can add in the um, details of your phone number. So, and click add for that. But the one that um, I wanna talk about right now is adding your license plate. So when you click on add license plate, this is where you're gonna put up your, um, the, the license plate on your vehicle, the province of the license plate. Um, I, my understanding is that in Calgary, if you have a very small vehicle, like a smart car, you might get a little bit of a promotion for that. Um, I don't know much in terms of the details on, on the small vehicle promotion, but if you have a very small car, click on that and enter the vehicle length. If you don't have a small vehicle, um, then don't worry about that part. So just enter your license plate and the province and click on add. 
So once you've entered in um, your license plate and your phone number, um, then uh, you can actually go to start and end session there. So, so back on the main screen here, um, there we go, okay. So back on the main screen here, um, this is where uh, uh, you can actually, I think a screen is missing. So I'm just going to, what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna quickly share my, my phone there because uh, I think one of the screens is missing and I'm just going to make it so it's a little bit clearer. Okay, so in here is going to be like where where you can actually start and end your session. So when you're on the screen, click on start parking session, and then it's going to ask you for the zone. So. This zone number is going to be found at the top of uh, um, one of the um, one of the, the street signs there. So I don't actually know if uh, if this zone is here. Um, but once you actually click out a zone number, then you can click start and uh, actually start your parking session. One thing that I'll probably or I'll mention first though that you might have to do is if you are doing this for the first time, you may actually have to add money to your account. Um, cause park plus does charge, um, like if you were going to the machine there. So similar to what we did before in the top right hand corner. So on the left hand side, this is where you can get, uh, um, uh, details on, uh, uh starting, uh, and ending a session, finding parking, things like that. Um, if you see the little icon that actually has, uh, um, your face instead of the lines, here's where you can add in, uh, um, funds. So in my case, I've got about $10.11 left in my account. Um, but if you click on that add funds button, this is where you can go in and add different amounts uh, to your Park Plus app. Um, I'll do it in increments of $25. Um, once you click add funds, um, the next one, it'll ask you for details about your credit card so that it can charge your, your card directly. Does this make sense for everybody so far? So when you're using this app, you have to have uh, Wi-Fi or data. That's right. You have to have Wi-Fi or data for this one as well. Okay. Awesome. So just go back to the presentation here. So one thing to remember too is after you start your parking session, there we go. Um, when you're done parking, don't forget to end your parking session as well. So you wanna make sure that once you've finished parking that you go back into the Calgary Park app, that you click on end. The reason why is this is really good because unlike uh, where you had to put in money to meters in the old days there, um, where even if you weren't there for very long with the Park Plus app, if you're only there for a couple of minutes, you can actually start and end your session so it will only charge you for the time that you're actually there then uh, um, for a longer period of time or for the full duration. Um, so again, when you start your, your Park Plus app, don't forget to end it as well. Oh, will you go back? Uh, it says uh, they will charge you a dollar for what does that mean? Um, a minimum dollar purchase applied to all cell phones. What does that mean? I think in this case, uh, let me just see if I can find uh, um, where it says that. I think uh, if you're using the Park Plus app, uh, um, the, the minimum that it'll charge is one dollar. Oh, okay. Yeah. So, like, if you if you park and, and spend five dollars, and it'll charge you five dollars. Um, but if you park and only use like uh, I don't know, um, fifty cents. cents. 50 oh, cents okay. Dollars. Oh, yeah. okay. Okay, I thought if they would charge you on top a dollar. I don't believe so. Okay. I think it's just a minimum that uh, is charged for, for all sessions there. Okay, okay. So um, another thing that you can do is under the options section, and I'm just gonna move this over so I can see it there. So here's uh, um, where we'll talk a little bit about adding funds one more time there. So at the top, Again, this little uh, line icon. This is also, uh, so on an Android, it shows us the little lines on there. And I realized on the iPhone, that's where it shows us the, the face in the top right hand of the lines. Um, so from there, you can click on 
um, ad account funds. Um, it'll look a little bit different on the iPhone than this, but uh, that's where you can go in to your account. So again, uh, just walking through what we were chatting about just a second ago, um, you can select how much you want to add. Um, you can go to proceed to payment. Um, and then from there, you can uh, actually enter in your billing information. So your name, your address, your credit card details and all of that. Um, once you've added funds to your account, I actually have to uh, um, keep adding in information for your credit card. Um, it'll just use the funds in your account until you've used them up. So some of the more are some options that are also available. So again, the options here. Um, you can click on find parking. On the iPhone, it'll actually be, the option for this will be on the top left-hand corner um, rather than the top right-hand corner. Um, but when you click on find parking, it'll bring up a map to help you find where, um, where you want to go and it'll show different parking zones in that area. So say you wanted to go to, uh, let's say the Calgary Tower and we were on a Saturday. You could pick the time of day that you wanted to travel and it would actually tell you the different areas in the city that you could park close to the Calgary Tower. So you could mm -hmm. zoom in that area to find it. Um, another option that you have is something called Park a Friend. So Park a Friend is essentially where, say you and another person are traveling, um, you can actually pay for their parking if you want. Um, you're a very nice friend if you pay for their parking. Um, <laughs> you can actually go in and uh, enter in the zone number and their license plate um, along with uh, um, the end time and start their, uh, um, their parking session for them. Um, so it'll take the money from your account. So you have to have money set up on, uh, on Park Plus to be able to use it. Um, but again, if you want to be a really nice friend and, uh, and pay for your friend's parking, then you definitely got it through here as well. <laughs> So does anybody have any questions uh, on the Park Plus app? I know we went through that one a little bit quickly, but um, has anybody, uh, uh, do you think it'll be an app that you would find useful? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think so, yeah. What yeah. happens if you forget to put in when you finish parking? So you have to pay. What'll end up happening is all zones in Calgary have uh, like a maximum time that you can be there. Um, some like two hours, for instance. Um, what will happen is you'll essentially pay for parking up till the two hour point and then your parking will expire and it'll stop automatically. But the oh. downside of that is, say you only parked for 10 minutes and you forget to end, um, mm. you'll pay for two hours of parking. Um, oh, so, uh, okay. You'll make sure that you go in and end it uh, um, so oh, that you have okay. the least amount of parking possible. Okay, okay, <laughs> okay. And, and trust me, I have done that a lot. I hate when I do that because uh, I realize that I pay far more money um, for parking than I should, especially when I'm. <laughs> <laughs> so, got a couple of questions here, and uh, um, this one actually just shows the answers here. But the first one, what can you do with the Flip app? So, can you guys tell me what you can do with the Flip app? You can find a deal. You can create a list what you want to buy. Yeah, I, I wish I did do it. Yes, uh, you can. Uh, <laughs> Stores, and you can create shopping lists to make it easier for you to find groceries when you go out. Um, yeah. So how is the Calgary Transit app different from Google Maps? Because Google Maps also shows transit info. Oh, okay. it tells you um, your, okay. your public transit schedules and timing as well. Yeah. Map doesn't tell you how to, how to get there. Oh, it tells you how to get there, but doesn't tell you which bus you can you can take. Exactly. So uh, um, the Calgary Transit app is specialized in public transit um, and it's more user friendly for checking route schedules. So it will give you more detail for checking routes. Google Maps is really good, but uh, for Calgary Transit, the Calgary Transit app is actually a lot better at showing you the information to find different buses and different routes and whatnot. Um, so what are some of the options my parking offers? So what are some of the things you can do with my parking? Pay your money you find your virtually instead of having to go to the place to add your money or pay your parking. Exactly. So if it's raining outside, if it's snowing, if it's super cold and you just don't want to go outside, uh, you can use the phone to do it instead. Um, and I do that all the time because I hate the cold. So I'd rather stay inside my nice warm car. Mm -hmm. And you can also pay for parking for a friend um, and you can use the app to find parking as well. 
Can sure. we go back to the split to the split thing, um, Ryan? Once we have um, um, we are on that split application because we have to put in our password. And do we have to to really get out of that app once we use it? Uh, like, what do you mean, get really get out of it? Um, when we when we get into the app, we have to put in our password, right? Yes. Oh, you mean and you once we finish that? using it, do we really have to say log out or do anything about it? No, you're fine. You can just close it. Or just close it, it's gone. And next time when you open it again, then you have to put in your password again or you are already there? Probably you'll still be logged in. You might have to log in again, but likely you'll, you'll stay logged in. Okay, thank you. So we don't have to go into anything, say log out or anything. So it's safe to get you, it stay on? You can if you want. Uh, I mean, like if you have pe multiple people using your phone and you really don't want them to know what your shopping list is, then you can probably mm -hmm. log out. But um, I mean, if you're buying milk and eggs, uh, it's, it's, it's not super secret. So uh, um, you probably don't need to worry about that. Okay. Finally, awesome. I think we are now ready to. Yeah. Hey, thank you. Thank you, Ryan. Thank you so much. And thank you.